inflammation is an essential part of us being alive. When you sprain an ankle or you tear a muscle, inflammation goes there to heal it. So it's an essential part. We kind of kind of create a war on inflammation, but it's actually a good innate part of our healing, uh, our healing body. Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here. I'm gonna to talk to you today about inflammation. This is a topic that for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years has been a, a huge topic in the healthcare field and just in general in the public. People are getting more and more informed about what inflammation is and really being more concerned about it. They know, uh, we've been told it's been linked to everything from cancer to heart disease, diabetes, and even just our every daily aches, like arthritis, right? Joint pain is, I, itis, that means inflammation. Anything, anything that ends with itis is that inflammatory response. And so we know that it's a big deal no matter who you go to, whether it's a, a medical doctor, a, a naturopath, a chiropractor, a, a dentist. We know that they're gonna, that they know that inflammation, or they know that inflammation is really, they've said the cause, the secret killer is what they call it, the cause of all these underlying health issues, high blood pressure, all these things. However, our approach to looking at inflammation and how you actually do, or what you actually do about that inflammation is different across the board. There's really two different approaches. I wanna start out with kind of a story here to, to, to help you understand this. So I have a patient that uh, uh, years ago they came in and, and she had uh, ulcerative colitis. And this is one of my favorite stories to talk about inflammation because ulcerative colitis means inflamed ulcers in the colon, right? So by definition, there's inflammation down there. And the answer, when she went to her doctor, she went to her doctor and she was having digestive problem, constipation, diarrhea, back and forth, and a lot of pain in her gut. And she went there, they did a colonoscopy, they found ulcerative, colitis, ulcerative colitis, and the, the answer, as you might imagine, was giving her some sort of a medic medication to drop that inflammation. So they gave her a steroid, the inflammation came down. Now, of course, inflammation's down, so she's better, right? And that's what the doctor said, you're doing great, keep taking these. Uh, the problem is, and, and I think they know this, you can't take those forever. And so as she would start to come off with the inflammation would just come back up and then eventually those steroids didn't work anymore. And it got to the point where she ended up in our office. And a lot of times, because we're more of a natural doctor, we kind of be, we're kind of that last chance that people will take uh, to get better. And so she came into our office and she said, uh, my doctor's pretty much said that uh, if I don't, if this doesn't get better soon, he's gonna have to do surgery and they're gonna put me on a colostomy bag. Now this is a 35 year old woman who has kids and she's gonna go on a colostomy bag. Right? Not only is she in pain because her stomach hurts all the time, she doesn't know, uh, you know, she can't go out with her friends and, and family because she's worried about if she has to use the restroom or if she's gonna start having uh, pains again. Um, but now they're telling her they're gonna put her on a colostomy bag. And guys, that's America right now. That's what's happening on a regular basis because we're not getting to the cause. Because here's the question that the doctor's asking about inflammation. He's asking, how can I get rid of the inflammation? That, that answer is easy. Go take an ibuprofen, go take some steroids. The question we wanna ask, and I wanna encourage you to think this way, it's a different perspective, but I want you to think this way is, why is your body creating an inflammatory response? Okay, so let me just say that again, why is your body creating an inflammatory response? Why are you stuck in this constant immune response? Because essentially, inflammation is a normal response that the body has on a regular basis to fight off viruses, to fight off bacteria. Uh, when, you're, when you sleep at night, your cells are dying off and new cells are being replaced. Inflammation occurs, you wake up in the morning, your adrenals produce cortisol, those, that converts to cortisone, and then you drop that inflammation in the morning. But inflammation is an essential part of us being alive. When you sprain an ankle or you tear a muscle, inflammation goes there to heal it. So it's an essential part. We kind of kind of create a war on inflammation, but it's actually a good innate part of our healing, uh, our healing body. So the question is, why is your body stuck in that immune response? Why are we constantly trying to fight off or constantly trying to heal and create inflammation? What's happening in the body? And so when you ask that question, you can get a lot better answers. You can start to investigate and find out. And for, for her, it was, why is she inflamed? And so we had to investigate. We had to do some testing and find out why. And so that might be different for everyone. But here's some signs. Uh, you know, we think, well, how do I know if I'm inflamed? Well, here's five signs. And, and we have an ebook on inflammation that goes through about 10, 15 different signs and, and top 10 things you can do to change it and testing you can do to find out if you're inflamed. But I'm gonna give you five of these things that I think are um, pretty common in our world today to tell you that you're inflamed. Number one is that you wake up achy. Okay, if you've ever woken up in the morning and you feel like you got hit by a freight train, your joints hurt, your back hurts, and you just feel swollen, well that tells you that you're in an inflammatory response and your body probably isn't producing a proper amount of cortisone to fight off that inflammation. The second thing that you'll feel a lot of times is, or you'll see is, is high blood pressure or any kind of heart issues 
or arterial wall issues, and that inflammation can be key there. The other one that we see is digestive problems, that bloating, diarrhea, constipation, or any of those back and forth, irritable bowel issues is a huge sign that you have a chronic inflammatory response. One of the other ones is joint pain. That's what most people think of. When you think of inflammation, you think of your knees hurting or your back hurting, things like that. And I, you know, just a side note, when, when someone has knee pain, I always think it's funny when the doctor tells them that it's genetic or that it's just old age, right? And because my, my favorite thing to say is, okay, your left knee hurts and your right knee hurts. Well, which one started hurting first? Well, my left knee started hurting first, okay. Well, whose genetics were in your right knee, you know? And, or who's, who, who, how old is your right knee versus your left knee? It's not genetics, it's not age, it's the wear and tear and the stress that's happening in those joints, or it could be stress systemically in your body creating inflammation throughout those joints. The final one is swelling. If you feel like your limbs are swollen, your hands are swollen, your ankles are swollen, those are five tall tale signs that you have inflammation. Sometimes they call inflammation the silent killer because sometimes there's no symptoms at all. Okay? So those are five things. If you're experiencing those, you can, I can almost promise you there's an inflammatory response happening in your system. If it's chronically feeling that way, we need to figure out why, not just take an ibuprofen, Aleves, things like that. The next thing I want to share with you guys is five things you can actually start to change about it. Okay? And I'm just getting right to the point, giving you simple action steps you can do at home. And I say these are simple, but these might be some of the hardest things for a lot of people to change. Number one is change your diet. Change the foods that you're eating. Okay? And starting off with reducing sugar. Okay? And I know we all know that, that sugar can be inflammatory and it's bad for us. But looking for those hidden sugars, looking at things like pasta, rice, breads, different grains that turn to sugar in the body, corn, that all just alters right into sugar. Also, reading the ingredients list and seeing what's all in uh, your food. Also, synthetic sweeteners. So a lot of times when I say reduce sugar, we move on to aspartame or sucralose. You want to reduce those as well because those will also create just as much inflammation in the body. The second thing you can do is, and I always go to this as well, is remove gluten, remove dairy, corn, and soy, okay? Uh, and I know those are hard ones because they're in most of the food products in our grocery stores, but let me just tell you what gluten does to the body. When you eat gluten, it's, it's, it's kind of this gummy substance that our body doesn't really understand. In general, wheat, the genetic makeup of wheat, there's multiple different genetic makeups now. It's very genetically modified, but it's also nothing like it used to be in ancient, ancient grain history when you think of bread and things like that. So it's this gluten substance, this gummy substance, it goes in the body, and immediately our body thinks it's an infection. So it creates an immune response. Our, our gut releases something called, it's called zonulin, right? And our body releases this zonulin, and it causes the gut lining, the cell wall of the gut lining, to actually gap away from each other. Well, we call that a leaky gut or permeable gut. If you, if you put in permeable, gut permeability, you can go on uh, the Mayo Clinic website and put gut permeability. It's the same thing, it's a leaky gut, and what that allows is proteins to go through the um, bloodstream, into the bloodstream, and create a huge inflammatory response. Okay, it's our body's natural way of getting, an effect, getting rid of an infection, but it's gluten. It's not supposed to be an infection. So all of us, if you remove gluten, you're gonna do better. Dairy is just a super toxic food in our world today. Uh, the way cows are raised, the high pasteurization process, it's mostly just sugar and a bunch of hormones and antibiotics and nastiness. So removing those is huge, and then you got your soy, which is genetically modified, and, and all kinds of messed up in our in our country we don't have very good soy anymore either or corn the third one is change bad fats for good fats and i'm not going to go to each individual good versus bad fats but what you can do is on, we'll leave a link below to a kind of a, a little pdf of good fats versus bad fats you can download those for yourself it's simple stuff like canola oil versus coconut oil or vegetable oil versus you know avocado oil things that are bad versus good oils and those bad fats create a ton of inflammation in the body, leading to heart disease, all these things. So number four is change the meats that you're eating. So instead of the conventional uh, meat that might be a little bit cheaper, but is super inflammatory that's fed grains, right? And, and if you ever wanna know if grains are good for us, and if they're healthy, look at what they're feeding our cows and why they're feeding it. They feed them grains so it fattens them up fast. Well, guess what happens when we eat grains? It fattens us up fast too. So. Go with your organic, grass-fed, free-range uh, type of animals that are raised the way an animal is supposed to be raised. The final one is, and these are some a, a few little supplements because I know everybody likes what can I take. And these are the ones if I was if somebody just asked me real quick, what can I take for inflammation? The only answer I could give them was this: is I would say turmeric, fish oil, and do an apple cider vinegar twice a day. Okay, apple cider vinegar, shot of that in water, a good, strong, potent turmeric supplement on a daily basis, 
and a good, healthy, from a good source, fish oil. Uh, and we'll put some of those links below on what sources you can have that are best for those. Okay, so those five things, if you're feeling inflamed, if you know or you're concerned about inflammation, instead of taking an ibuprofen, those have been linked to heart disease, or to causing heart attacks, FDA came out two years ago and showed that uh, within the month that you take an ibuprofen, your chance of a heart attack goes up by 40%. So not a good idea, right? My dad actually had a heart attack and was, we, we linked it back and so did his cardiologist back to the ibuprofen that he hadn't taken in years. He took one because his, his eye was infected. He took an ibuprofen. Within two days, he had a heart attack and his doctor said never take an ibuprofen again. That's coming from a cardiologist, all right? Big deal. All right, guys. So use that, and I, I can promise you, if you start to move taking those things out that I told you, you're going to tell a difference, but there's also a lot more to it. So you always want to find someone that can help you get the right testing and find out how healthy your body actually is. You guys have an awesome day. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if you want to connect with us and learn more, we're constantly shooting information or shooting videos. We actually have a blog as well, and we have a website where you can learn so much more. If you want help with your health, you can actually connect with us, come into our clinic, or jump on a phone call with us and see if we can help you. To do that, go to the links below in the, in the information area and click those areas, and then you can move forward and see how we can actually address and help you with your health issues as well.